we can do an evaluation to say, hey, I think this is this is a good price. But there's there's also another thing that called due diligence, which you know that's something that, that's in real estate. That's, that's in any any term that period of time in which you can go and examine numbers, etc., and ask a lot of questions. And so, um, and different services are needed in different times, right? Like if you're if you're good with the numbers, you say, hey, if it's producing this, then I'm, then I'm fine paying this. Then at that point, really, you need to do some digging on the numbers and say, "Hey, does this does this match up? Um, or is there really these this many cars coming from the car wash, or is this there were really this many subscriptions?" Welcome everybody back to another exciting show of the About That Water podcast. I have the awesome opportunity to bring on a guest that talks about business acquisitions. So if you're new to the show, my name is Anthony Weaver. I am the host where we help you build strong financial habits. So the guest that I have today is David Amiss. So David, um, first off, I just want to say thank you for coming on to this show. Anthony, thanks for having me. Uh, I like I like what I do, and I like talking about it, and and in general helping people uh, through financial uh, matters. Um, and so I'm I'm excited to be here. Awesome. So, David, you've um, also assist attorneys, business owners, and other professionals in determining the value of their company or, or even just their interests. Um, mm-hmm. So you like your primary focus is like family law and like gift mm-hmm. and estate and stuff like that. So. Um, can you just tell me a little bit, like, what got you into um, this line of practice? Yeah, that's a great question. So going all the way back to college, which what seems like a lifetime ago, um, <laughs> I, I was interested in, in business valuation. But at the time, I felt like it was uh, uh, it, it was uh, a bit abstract and, uh, and and a lot of art. And uh, and I think I'm I'm probably more of a, of a science person just naturally. I, I like uh, I like boxes and I like structure and and so accounting uh, made a lot of sense and so i, I did uh my my uh, formal training is in is in accounting um i did accounting for about 10 or 13 years and then decided that that, that uh, i wanted to i wanted to do more uh, evaluation at least see if, if this is something that i could i could do maybe in the second half of my career and uh so i invested in the training and um and i found out that it, it valuation is an art, but it's uh, but it's also science. There's uh, there's a lot of information. And there's a lot of research out there, and there's a lot of people that have gone before me in the field um, that that have contributed a lot. And uh, and we can it's less abstract than than, uh, than I thought it was. And so I did accounting, public accounting for a while, taxes, things of that nature. And then um, I think you do anything long enough, you you probably get tired of it. And, and I That's did. True. And and. Uh, and so I, I made the decision about two or three years ago just to kind of go all in on valuation. And um, and I still pull heavily from the public accounting background, taxes and, and uh, accounting and finance. Um, but this is this is where I'm at. And I love what I'm doing and which makes it which uh, which is which is a great thing. I love coming to work. I love helping folks. And um, that's kind of how I got to where I got. So um Anybody's excited to be here. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, coming across with the CPA, everybody hear this lovely term CPA, which is a certified public accountant. Yep. Um, but they all not created equal. <laughs> no. So what type of thing were you practicing in those 18 years? Yeah, I did uh, at the beginning, like a lot of people do on, in the public accounting early in their career, we do everything, right? You just kind of, uh, you, Cross pollinate, and that's one of the, one of the ways somebody described it, which is kind of weird, but whatever. Uh, anyway, do some accounting, do some auditing, do some taxes, do some bookkeeping, and you really get exposed to a lot of things. And I think uh, you know, at some point, you know, people need to start migrating in, in one direction or the other. It's hard to be great at a lot of things, and so um, I focus primarily on taxes and um, and really individual and corporate. Um, um, but, but also accounting and, uh, trying to help people understand financial statements and, you know, so they can, so, you know, that knowledge, knowledge is power. And so they can, uh, make informed decisions and, you know, do the best for themselves. That is awesome. Because one of the things that we always know and hear is that we always need a CPA or 
some of the people that are listening right now are either going through a lot of taxes, they just purchased their first real estate, or um, they have a business and they just don't know how to structure their finances. But, you know, some of us might have started or have been doing it for a while, but then it's like, you know, they don't have any family to leave it to, and maybe they just want to sell their business. So how do you, as a CPA coming in, looking at a business and be like, you know what, this business is not that great. It looks good on the outside, but it's not good on the books. Um, how do you go about that process? Yeah, it, it's, um, it, I think calling it a process is really important. I, I think we, we start by just asking for a lot of information and then just start looking and um, and just, you know, basic questions, you know, what, what do I see? Do I see, you know, a company that's profitable or not? Do I see a lot of variability or volatility in, in the earnings? Um, uh, you know, so, 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 so what do I see? And then we start asking questions like, um, you know, uh, you know, trying to understand, you know, what's the foundation, what's driving what I see. Right. And, uh, ask management questions and, and, uh, and that, that moves, you know, early on the questions, you know, we can see, uh, you know, uh, things that, that are going to help us understand what sort of benefits or, or is this company producing, but then we also have to understand the risk. And, um, you know, cause, uh, that's important. Is there, is there diversification of, uh, of customers? You know, is there a, is there a bench strength? You know, does this company have, you know, people in place or is it, is it all riding on one person, which is extremely risky. Um, so I think we, we try to look at it, both things, both the earnings stream, like how much income is this thing going to produce? And then what's the risk associated with that? And, and those two, those two elements, um, benefits and risk or, or rate of return, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. uh, that, that that's applicable in everything in real estate. Uh, if you, if you want to invest in, in, in a, in a publicly traded stock, you know, um, what return do you want and, and what rate of uh, risk, you know, are you, are you going to accept or require to give somebody your money? Right. So, you know, one of the things that I, I always try to think of. All right. So say somebody is just like brand new, fresh out the gate, new green. Everybody's happy. You know, hey, I got my EIN. I'm registered with the state and or indoor county. And um, so I'm all set to go. And what would a person just starting out their business should do so that later on it will look amazing to your eyes to say like, you know what, they, this will be a good business to acquire. Yeah. I think, I think having a business plan is, is a, is a great place to start. And, uh, and then, and then, you know, as they go through six months, uh, a year, uh, you know, five years, we can see how, Hey, listen, we have this plan and, uh, we're going to deploy this kind of capital and it yielded this, these kind of results. And so, uh, so I think a plan is important in, in evaluating the plan. Right. And, uh, uh, and then, and also accounting, um, we, we, we've got to be able to have good data. You know, the financial statements aren't the only way that we can measure success or progress, um, but but it is a way and it's a significant way. And so I think having a plan and um, constantly looking at the plan, budgets, et cetera. And then- um, um, Can you can you go back? Because um, you mentioned something that, um, that I, w I don't want people to kind of skip over, which was the business plan. Mm -hmm. like, what- things that that stick out as far as a good business plan like what should people really have in there yeah um a, a lot of things but i'll just start <laughs> spitting them off um uh, you know like like what what uh what, what are you, you going to sell or what are you going to provide and and how is it going to be different from 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 other people like like what's going to be your your differentiation strategy like why should i come to you um so 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 what's the product do, do i understand the um do i understand the the economy right like you know uh that i, I value funeral homes before and uh, and uh you need to understand how people are are people okay with cremation or, or burial or and and what are the trends and if i'm doing one of those or not like we just need to understand those trends or if it's a car wash you know if people are more apt to be okay with um this subscription model um, where they just pay so I think I think uh, I think that's important capital. You know, like 
how uh what what kind of capital when i say capital what, what kind of support is going to be uh required uh to to produce whatever widget or whatever thing you're trying to to, to do or sell and where's that capital going to come from uh if you accept capital from other people whether it's banks and debt or you know private investors friends uh etc family etc um what, what are the what are they requiring what kind of streams are they are they attaching because when you accept when you accept capital, you, you accept the strings too. Yep. Um, uh, and I think, I think those are, that's probably some good places to start. Okay. So we, on this website called biz by sell, I believe that's the, one of the websites, I think where they can actually kind of go and take a look at different businesses. Um, and let's use the example of a car wash because that's a boring business. And it seems like something that a lot of people is really attractive for people who just want to just set it and forget it type deal, like mm -hmm. the self me car washes and they see the business. Um, I heard that there is an option where when you're trying to acquire a business, you can actually do it almost like I would relate it to real estate, which is almost like a seller finance, which means that the owner is still there, but you take on the risk. I mean, you take on majority of it because they say like, Hey, this business does a million dollars in revenue. Um, a year. And so that they can actually keep the owner there for that time frame before they uh, take over the whole business. So it's almost like they're getting paid to learn, mm -hmm. almost like an internship. So if we have that option on the table for a car wash, what would be uh, some of the, the key questions that, you know, uh, everybody should should ask? I think the, the deal terms are one, like, like what's the uh... How long is that period? Uh, like the, the deal terms overall, like uh, like who's, what am I buying? Uh, when am I buying it? When do I got to pay for it? Um, I, I think is I think is one thing. Um, if, I think also just the, the the data that's behind the the revenue figures, and so how many cars on on what days they come. Like like I need I need to be an expert on knowing when people come for a car wash. Um, uh, I think that that's it. And then I think the, uh, imagine with a car wash, you're going to have real estate and you're going to have uh, a building and equipment. And so like, what's the, what's the annual maintenance on, on that? And, uh, and then what's the, what's the debt service requirement on, on that? So those are in that scenario or in that uh, specific question. I think those are things that I'd be wanting to know. Okay. And so once we have that information, all right. And then we, do we like then start to come to you inside say we here in North, like in North Carolina mm -hmm. all of a sudden be like hey I like this business I ask all the key questions um yeah. they like the top five questions to come to you is that enough information to come to you or what else will we need well yes I think there, there's there's uh accounting firms and other people like me can can do really two services you know we can we can do an evaluation to say, hey, I think this is this is a good price. But there's there's also another thing that called due diligence, which you know that's something that's, that's in real estate. That's, that's in any any term that period of time in which you can go and examine numbers, et cetera, and ask a lot of questions. And so, um, and different services are needed in different times, right? Like if you're if you're good with the numbers, you say, hey, if it's producing this, then I'm, then I'm fine paying this. Then at that point, really, you need to do some digging on the numbers and say, "Hey, does this does this match up? Um, or is there really these this many cars coming from the car wash, or is this there were really this many just subscriptions?" And uh, and I think doing some work on there, just supporting and uh, understanding the foundation of the numbers. Um, and so we can we can do e either of those you know services, um, the valuation like this is a good number or you know, um, uh, that, that, uh, then the other side, the due diligence side. Okay. Um, and with all the due diligence, I take it as more so like the forensic side of the house. So you guys, um, do that yeah. and just kind of dig into it. Yeah, I think so. Uh, kind of like that. I don't know that I would call it forensic, but, but I think, you know, <laughs> we may go look at, um, uh, you know, if we're going to look at the the revenue on a financial statement, and, and we'd like to see bank statements, and, and let's see where the deposits are matching up with that revenue, right? Mm -hmm. If I if I think this is a good deal based on you know looking at the profit and loss statement, and it has X dollars in revenue and X dollars in expenses or profit, like did they 
you know, uh, then they, is it, is reality what I see on paper. And so, uh, so we may do something like a proof of cash and, and say, Hey, I want to, I want to, I want to understand the cash going in and the cash coming out. Cause at the end of the day, uh, cash is king, right? And yeah. um, and if we feel good about cash, then um, we sh- we should feel good about the rest of it. So that's one of the things we're going to do: making sure the, the revenue number is is right, and um, and then dig into the rest of the expenses. Okay. Um, so now we understand that. And say, for instance, just me going out there by myself, I acquire this. Say somebody was out there single just acquiring mm-hmm. this, this new um, car wash business mm-hmm. and everything is going fine and dandy, all the numbers check out. Then all of a sudden they get married without a prenup signed. Mm-hmm. How would they best structure that? And like, will the wife be able to now start seeing the numbers and asking them about the business? Yeah, I think uh, I guess technically, if, if if he owns the business in that scenario, and the wife doesn't own the business, then uh, I, I don't know that she uh, has any rights. I think that's probably more of a, of a law, business law question. But I don't know that she has rights to um, uh, to, to see the to see the books. Now, that's different than if we're. It's a different matter than if we're saying, "Hey, um, you know what." Uh, uh, what is what is available to be split up, right? Because if mm-hmm. you know if he if he owns something, if if somebody started a business, bought a business before marriage, and then they get married, um, the entire business isn't necessarily marital and part of the marital estate. There, there's an asset there that that existed before the marriage and and may be um, may be separate and uh, and not available to, to to split up. If that makes sense. It does, um, because I'm thinking like if in case things don't work out between them, yeah. uh, what would that look like? Or in case he passes away without the will and all this fun stuff. Um, yeah, well, and I think this is why it's another thing. Like if if uh, for anybody listening, like if you're, I don't know that that anybody wants to get just just happy to go to an attorney and and spend a couple thousand dollars, but 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 please, please, please. Um, find an attorney, an attorney that you trust and that that you like, and um, uh, interview them and and talk to them. But but they, it, it's worth it, right? You, you either pay them now or pay them later. <laughs> and yeah. um, and so like if you go into business, like like know what's going to happen with that business if, if things don't work out, either by, by by death, by splitting up. You know, if you have a business partner, I would recommend having a, a buy sell agreement, and so you know how people. How how the how the deal is structured when somebody wants to exit that way because that, that can be painful on the back end if you don't already have that in place. But um, you know, I think anybody with kids, you know, they're they're going to have a will to understand what happens with their assets upon death or what happens to the kids. Same thing with the business, and um, that's a that's a part of being a good business owner and um, uh, is kind of having that planned out. You know. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of business owners, if they're if they're if there's a partnership or so, uh, they they have it in place that that, that the other owner has the first right of refusal to buy their interest, and and, and they typically have like a, a life insurance a, agreement or arrangement that if one of them dies, that it provides enough cash that that the other one can buy the other one out, and so that's trying to protect them. And so um, I think we just need to need to make plans on what to do with the business. Yeah, that um, is one of the things that is kind of scary because also in, um, I would have to say like maybe in a black and brown community, it's usually just a single sole proprietorship when it comes to businesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And usually when they stop working in the business, the business is gone. Is there uh, something out there in your expertise have seen where somebody who's ready to just stop like, what should they do before they just stop? Because I'm just thinking about like me for this podcast. Like, what should I do before I stop? Should I come to you guys and say like, "Hey, I'm willing to kind of uh, stop my business, but I'm wanting to sell." Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think you can. I mean, a, a lot of CPAs uh, they gain information and knowledge, and uh, over time, they can probably help. There's also people that this is what they do specifically, but uh, I think we need to try to look at the business and understand and say like, where, where's the value? Like, what what value can transfer? 
um, uh, some of the terms that we use kind of uh, uh, that are really what's what we're talking about here is enterprise goodwill versus personal goodwill. Mm-hmm. And so enterprise goodwill is a, that's an intangible asset that, that's related to, to the business function. And that if, uh, that if, it, it, that if you were to stop doing what you're doing, that the business is going to continue to make a profit. Now it, it, it may suffer some, um, but the business will continue to make a profit. Like, you know, uh, name any publicly traded company, like whoever the CEO is, even the CEO founder, um, you know, it's, it's big enough. It has uh, management and tiers, et cetera, structure. And so there's there's enterprise, there's business goodwill. The other thing is, is like the personal goodwill, right? And so if a, if a, if a, a doctor, um, you know, the, the doctor that has a business, it can be hard for them to sell, um, to sell their business and to get the the return, um, the benefits that that they're currently recognizing, right? right. Because there's a certain level of of personal goodwill. The, the goodwill, the value, is wrapped up in in their person versus the business. And so, I think we just need to try to figure out how to shift that and how to, you know, whether it's we, we go after more customers and we have a, a wide customer base, or, or we we've hired people and we've trained people and we have an established workforce. An established workforce is is valuable, and 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 right now when people, when people are hard to find, like people people will pay for that. So that's similar to you, um, if I'm following this correctly, is that the people or the guests or the customers are there for the person, not so much the business itself. If I'm following correctly, yeah, I, I think so. I think that's a, that's a way that's a way of thinking about it in, in this uh, trying to understand the difference in goodwill, you know, enterprise goodwill and personal goodwill for right. sure. So. Um, cause I was thinking about it, like when my dentist, he decided to move on to start his own practice and it was like up to me to decide to stick with that dentist, you know, it was good or continue on inside the practice of that facility with a brand new dentist, um, right. and going from that. So that kind of just thinking of an example that that's kind of a little bit relatable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sounds good. Um, so you actually mentioned in one of your articles talking about the three different ways to uh, evaluate a business. Yep. Um, can you kind of go through those three? Sure. So the the three traditional ways to value a business, and if you if you've seen a real estate appraisal, this won't come as a surprise. There's the the asset approach, which is which we could also call the cost approach. That just seeks to um, to look at the fair market value of the assets, um, and then subtract the fair market value of the liabilities. Um, well, what, what that doesn't include is what we just talked about, goodwill, the intangible assets, right? Like if, you, if you've, um, you know, there's, there's, a, uh, there's name recognition is a thing. Customer base is a thing. Those are intangible assets that, that don't readily show up on somebody's uh, balance sheet. Uh, the other two uh, approaches to value a business are the income approach and the market approach. The income approach determines the value of a company by uh, understanding the benefits that the company is producing, either measured in net income, earnings, or cash flows. It converts that number to, to a value by, by dividing it by capitalization rate, which, which is really just the, the rate of return, right? Uh, okay. If I invest in, in Apple stock and I invest you know, $100, so then I know that um, – there's a certain level of return that I'm going to require. Maybe it's 10%. And so that I know that I'm, I need to get $10 per year return on my investment or else I won't do the investment. Right. Um, and so the last approach is the market approach and it's, it's, it's comps, right? It's all about the comps. Um, so we go see other businesses that have sold and uh, similar to ours, whether it's uh, the car wash in, in that, in your example from earlier, mm-hmm. but Hey, uh, these car washes averaged, you know, you know, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in revenue, and they, and they, and they, and they sold for about, you know, eighty percent of their of their revenue, and so, uh, and so I can take that eighty percent and apply it to my revenue, my subject company revenue, to determine the value of the business. So those are the the three primary approaches. Okay, and that is a good way that. If somebody is looking out there, looking at their businesses and trying to figure out, okay, which one to use is to kind of just look at all three. And I think that would be helpful uh, mm-hmm. for the evaluation of the business. Cause there are some 
companies out there that they would just look at your website and just by your website, they'll evaluate uh, your your website and say like, hey, based on your website, this is what your business is uh, evaluated at. I actually tried it out once. They said my business was only worth like a thousand dollars. And then keep going. <laughs> I know, right? Because <laughs> I was keep like, going. but I got a trademark though. Um, I'm working on the getting it registered. It's just trademark right now for the name. Yep. So. Well, hey, I think it's uh, it's 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 about creating that that uh, that that content and moving forward, right? Yeah. Um, and so it, it's going to take sweat, but but over time, I think that the goodwill transfers from personal to enterprise, at least it can. Yeah, I, I hope so. I mean, I think we all hope so in business. You know, we just don't want to fail, and a lot of things is just sometimes we just got to let it go. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so that's the reason why I think like having to understand your value and understand your asset that you are an asset is, is very key. Mm-hmm. So, um, with that being said, you know, we talked about the business acquisition side of the house, but I want to dig into your story just a little bit. Um, so, you know, you've been through all these various degrees and everything like that. Is there something that you're running away from as a child from like, what are the habits that got you to where you are today? Well, I think, uh, I think I, I probably got to where I'm at today by a combination of two things. Um, uh, I think favor and, and, and blessing, um, from the Lord would, would be one, uh, absolutely. And I think the other one is hard work. And, um, I think those. Those two, at least for me, have worked together. Um, you know that that was probably instilled in me early on uh, to 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 work and and to work hard. I, I require of my kids today and uh, tell them they, they got to sweat. And uh, <laughs> you, know, you, can, you can go. You, you know, at the end of the day, we got we got to work. So I think those are two things that have helped me to get where I've gotten. Nice. So, well, what kept you going though? Like. Because you could have easily given up on all this along the along yeah, way. Sure. For sure. I think uh I think the desire to the, the desire to wanna wanna help folks or to grow or to learn. I, I enjoy what I do right now. Um I think when when I had a family it, it uh that, that certainly drove me um a lot. I think uh I think I think the the, the Lord and um certainly kept me going uh, but i think right now it's probably him uh, wife um i think that the reason to try new things at the end of the day i i want to i want to enjoy what i do yeah. I probably could continue pounding my head into the wall with uh with the taxes and accounting and um and, and i'm thankful for all the people that, that do that and love it um but but i was able fortunate with my firm to be able to, to try something different and um and uh and so i think just saying hey i i really want to enjoy what i do and uh and that that's really important like it, it's it's a game changer you know um because life, life is a little bit of a grind right and um there's probably some ag- agricultural metaphors that we need to we need to embrace right like we need to you know sometimes we uh we're gonna we're gonna we got, we got we're in a row and we gotta go to the end of it and, and tomorrow we gotta go to the next row and go to the end of it and and there's just, you know, there's just, there's just something about life that that's, it's like that, you know, relationships with people, uh, relationships in business and um, requires hard work. And if you want to enjoy what you do, then it's going to be, it's going to be hard to keep going. Yeah, definitely. Um, Cause that's one of the things they say in business is that relationships are, are key mm. um, in order to even maintain your business. Even if you're not doing well, you can actually look at the relationships that they've built and figure out, mm. okay, that business doesn't have good business relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went to a re- I went to a retirement party last night for a guy that had worked it, it, in in this firm for fifty years and um, fifty and just, years. Uh, oh, you said fifty. 50? Fifty Jeez. years. Yes, yes. He's retiring, but he worked. He came to this place uh, after college and uh, been here fifty years. And it, it was neat. It was just neat to hear the um, to hear the relationships. To, to your point. Um, and the people that he had affected and uh and uh, it, the people had a similar story to me and i could stand up and say man i love you and uh and thank you and um and so i think it, it's a wonderful example to me and um yeah at the end of the day uh customers and clients matter a hundred percent um 
but at the end of the day, they're they're people, and uh, uh, and I think we we gotta we gotta remember that it's more. Uh, it's the relationships matter, and um, I think we gotta see see all those connections for for people. You know, sometimes it's easy to get frustrated um, with a particular person or whatever or or an issue, but uh, I think remember there's people behind those issues. Yes, <laughs> and uh, so, anyways. No, it's um. Thank you for for bringing that in, um, because there are some people that still, you know, have that longevity, and some of us actually just kind of want to switch jobs every two to three years. So I see what the new generation is coming through, um, yeah. and usually, like even most people will start a business because they saw a gap or a need inside mm-hmm. a particular area, and they just want to help. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, because that's why I started my show was because I it was a lot of things I wasn't taught when I was growing up and I was mm-hmm. like, you know what, I think this is my, my time to, to speak, uh, to kind of share my voice on so the things that I've missed and I actually bring on experts like you, uh, who've been through the road and seen like, quite a bit of things that I would have never seen, yeah. but now we're yeah. here talking about it. So, yeah, I think, I, I think, uh, I, I am where I am again. I, I think, uh, I think I've been blessed. Um, uh, and I think there's a lot of folks around me that have poured into me and that, uh, that have helped me a bunch. And I love, I love to do that for other people. And I think there, there's a genuine satisfaction, um, in working with other people and teaching and training and pouring into. And, um, and I think, I think that's important. And, um, uh, I, I like, I'm, I'm competitive and, and I enjoy that, but, uh, but in, in that sense, life doesn't have to be a competition. It can be, Hey, let's just, uh, let's do right and do good by others and, um, just see where it goes. Uh, business is a relationship, no matter how you look at it. And if you want to be successful, you need it. Um, which brings me to the third segment, which is, you know, what skills or habits that you feel that will take you to the next level? Yeah, I think uh, at the end of the day, I I, uh, I think it is trust. Uh, pr- probably, probably, yeah. I've I've done a lot in probably in a spot in my career when I've done a lot of the of the of the grind, the day to day work, and now there's some folks that that that, uh, that I get the pleasure of working with and training and pouring into and. And and I think in order to move forward, I, I probably gotta trust um, trust other people more. And um, uh, and so I think I think that's um, uh, I think that, that's 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 scary. I think the other thing is is probably more more writing and speaking, which um, which is at the end of the day, it's creating content, and and that's that, that's a little bit nervous as well. I mean, you know this, you have you have a podcast, and so. Um, putting yourself out there and, uh, and, and seeing, seeing what people think. And, um, uh, I think that's a little nerve wracking and, and I know I need to be writing and speaking more. And so, um, and so, uh, I think those are probably two things, trusting the folks around me that are, that are, that, that I'm working together with on the team. Um, and then being, uh, being bold and vulnerable and, um, you know, in content, technical content, content around what we do. I would say, um, I kind of, I want to disagree with you on the terminology and the content. Let's okay. call it creating a moment in time because that's something that we, we're creating right now. It's just a moment in time conversation between you and I. More than likely is it not repeatable. So I, I will say uh, that's my thought of it. I mean, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, cause it's just one of those things. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do better with the language. Cause like they say, words have meaning, mm-hmm. but it's for sure. That's my, my thoughts on it. You wrote a book, uh, talking about the, uh, introduction to business valuation, uh, yep. for what do I call it? Matrimonial Matrim- lawyers. Yeah. Matrimonial lawyers. Can you do a, uh, talk a little bit about that before we go to the final four? Yeah, sure. So, um, I, uh, the book really has two, two purposes. I think there are some, there are some people that they just don't have a financial background and they shouldn't be penalized for that. And, uh, you know, so the attorneys that I work with, uh, either maybe they're young in their careers, they just graduated law school and focused all their time on, on learning the statutes and how to make an argument, et cetera. And, uh, so, so I wanted to, I wanted to help there. 
Um, and so I, I wrote a book uh, on valuation for for uh, really an introduction to valuation, you could say for anybody, but but there are some areas in the book in which it can be specialized or focused, and it's on attorneys and, and family law attorneys. Um, and so it's easy to read book. It's it's uh, I think it's easy to read book. And uh, I think the other reason is I, I want to do more work in this space, and I'm committed to it. And so I think the difference in the practice that I have and the practice that I want is an authority gap. And one of the ways to to close the authority gap is to write and to speak. And um, and so I wrote a book. <laughs> and so uh, just published in April. And so it's um, oh wow, congrats. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was a uh, it was a wonderful experience. I think, yeah. You know, looking back on college, I think uh, you know all those papers we have to write. I hated them. I hated them then. But looking back on it, I think it's a really good experience because it forces us to articulate and be very particular with our words. That's a good thing, and um, words have meaning, like you said. And uh, and so it, it was a it was a good exercise. I. I um, I probably moved a little bit in, on a couple of positions and uh, I, I strengthened, I think, other positions that I held. And um, it, it, it was a fun exercise and, and I, I actually like it. And uh, so I don't, I'm thinking about a second edition already. So ready for the final four? Let's do it. All right. So question number one, what does wealth mean to you? Uh, I think the words that come to mind will be uh, stewardship and, and opportunity. Um, I think, again, I've already I've, I've said it. Uh, I've alluded to it. I'm a Christ follower, and I think that anything we have, either time, talents, and treasure, are an opportunity um, uh, to be a blessing to the Lord and to other people. And so I think stewardship comes to mind and opportunity, opportunity to be a blessing. Um, so if, if, that, uh, if, if, that, if that's it, what you're looking for. Oh, no, it's not what I'm looking for. It's all about you. That's great. Number two, what was your worst money mistake? Hmm, my worst money mistake. Good question. Uh, student loans come to mind. <laughs> uh, gotcha. Student loans coming to mind. I, th- I, think, I think buying a truck after I, I had maybe got my first full-time job uh, I bought a vehicle and I just think, gosh, it, how much better would it have been to continue driving the other vehicle and save up where I didn't have to finance it for six years. And so um, I think that I think that since uh, I got out a, a little in front of my skis there and uh, so I put myself in a bad position. Gotcha. Number three, what is your favorite financial or non-financial book? Uh, I think outside of the Bible, there's a uh there's a, a biography on on a on a guy um called to the golden shores but uh trying to think of a favorite financial book um probably some of my some of my valuation books but that, that just probably makes me a dork <laughs> <laughs> it's okay i mean we have a lot of nerds on that listen to the show a lot of money nerds actually um yeah. so what's the name of the book uh I, th- I think pr- probably any of the valuation books, but uh, I'm trying to think if I have one actually around. Um, pro- probably just financial valuation applications and models. Um, so on the, on the business side, that's that's kind of that's what that's what I do, and so 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 I like it. Um, uh, but there's a, a biography about uh, about a missionary named Adoniram Judson. So to the Golden Shores is the name of that book. Um, it's a it's a, it's a great read. Uh, final fourth question is: What is your favorite dish to make? I feel like you know, I'm right in the, in the throes of it with kids. I have five kids: uh, uh, 17, 14, 12, 10, and seven. And so, like almost all my answers could be related to them because you know, I love to I love to love them. And I love to make them happy, and uh, they enjoy Friday nights uh, where I grill hamburgers. And so that's plain Jane, but. Uh, grill hamburgers and I fry French fries and I got, I got a deep fryer and it's got peanut oil in there and I fry those fries and they, they love it. I have no idea why <laughs> it's just some Lowry's uh, seasoning sauce. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, I, I, I like, I like to, when I cook or grill, I don't only really know we call grilling burgers cooking, but, uh, but, I, but 
if it if it works, I'll I'll, I'll claim it. Um, I, I do that. My kids my kids love it, and uh, it's a little bit of a tradition for us for the most part. And so grilling burgers and and frying fries or anything you can put in the fryer. <laughs> <laughs> so probably not the healthiest uh, response you've ever gotten. Uh, thinking about it, uh, it's a, it's on par with most of them. Okay, okay, I feel less par- bad now. Yeah, I think I only had like one healthy dish somebody mentioned, and I was like, okay, it was like a, I think they had like a um, chickpea salad or something like that. I can't remember. That's probably good. That, that is probably. Yeah. Good. Uh, I think I'll choose my burger, but but I. <laughs> 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 I'll choose your burger too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good questions. Good questions. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it took me a while to, to put them together. Uh, mm-hmm. So I have the very last question of the show, which is where could people find out more about you? Yeah. So um, it, you can come, go to our website. Uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn. Um, I. Uh, uh, you can also give me a give me a email me shoot me an email and uh, and I can we can connect sometime if you have questions about anything I've talked about I, I'd love to love to help uh, so that email address is uh, d uh, first initial David and then Amos A M I S S uh, at C R I C P A dot com um, love to be a resource for anybody if they have questions about what we talked about awesome David I cannot thank you. Uh, enough for your time and your honesty and pretty much your your transparency about your life you're mm-hmm. bringing in uh, your passion for what you do and why you do it and mm-hmm. talking about the ebbs and flows about business um, because this is something that we all either aspire to be a business owner or not um, and you even write in books which is again furthering your expertise furthering your uh, your passion to help other people to um, accomplish their goals in life, whether it be just inside the business or being a CPA, but also just to be a better person overall. So I, I, again, thank you for coming on the show. Man, yeah. thanks for having me. It, it was uh, it was a good experience. It was a great conversation, and uh, so I wish you well. And um, I'm excited to see the show out there, and uh, and for you have many more shows. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Hopefully you got something out this show. If you did, please leave a comment uh, or share it with somebody that you know that would actually take advantage of the information that we got today. So remember, don't just take the information, but actually apply it. And I hope you all have a wonderful time out there. Y'all be safe. I'm out. Peace.